Hi, beautiful moms. My name is Lauren, and I am so excited to be here with you today. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'd love to share a little bit about myself and my family. My husband's name is Christian. He is a pastor at our Temple Terrace campus, and we have two kids, and we have one kid on the way, so that will be a busy house of three. We also have two dogs, 10 chickens, and one tortoise. So busy house, and it's getting busier, so that is a little bit about me and the craziness that I live in right now. Um, but I did want to start with you ladies and um, I do want to pray us in real quick because today I want to share about something that is heavy and is currently something that I'm walking through and I'm hoping that some of you can take a little nugget from this. So let's just quickly just go to God right now. God, we just love you and we're just so grateful. We're grateful that you have brought us here today and um, God, that you've given us the gift of these beautiful children, God. And right now we just pray that you help us to um, gain a little nugget from today that hopefully we can take back and implement into the reality of what we live in every single day. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name, amen. Well, ladies, I wanna take us back. <laughs> I wanna take us back to when motherhood, becoming a mama started, right? Can you remember when you first decided I want to be a mom. I want to start this family. When you had that conversation with your spouse and you said, hey, babe, we should have a kid, <laughs> right? And for all of us, it might have looked different. It might have been um, a long process. You might have had to go through um, maybe some sort of processes, hormones or other things to maybe get pregnant. Maybe you adopted your first child and you had to go through the long craziness of that. Maybe it was super fast and easy and you didn't even talk about it first, but it just happened and whoops, we're pregnant, right? But the cool thing is we can all look back and remember when it first started, right? But one thing that we tend to not realize and we tend to not be aware of is what it's gonna look like after that, right? What's gonna happen once my reality that I'm in right now changes? What's gonna shift in my life? What's gonna shift in my relationship as, as this new baby and then maybe more babies come into our home, come into my life? And we read books, we go to studies, we talk to other women and everybody has a story of what pregnancy looked like for them or what motherhood looks like for them or what their journey is, but everyone's reality is different. So today I want to talk to you about finding the joy in your reality, the reality of being a mama, the reality of living this life, right? So if you think back to when it all first started, Right, when you and your husband first maybe got married and decided to have that child, right? When we get married, a lot of the times in that pastor's wedding speech, they use this verse. And it is our main verse that I have on your notes today, if you guys want to read that with me. And it's found in Ephesians 5:31, and it says, That is why a man will leave his father and mother and join his wife, and the two people will become one. Right? Some versions even say one flesh. So you're actually combining and you're becoming one, which really changes the game. Decisions are no longer made separately for the most part. Decisions and big things in life, right? Hopefully he doesn't just come home with a new giant screen TV. That might happen. But for the most part, big decisions, big things in your life are now made together. And hopefully having a child would be one of those decisions, right? And you decide together, we're going to go on this journey together. We're going to do this as one. Now, I like math. I was a teacher for a good while, so I do like math. So let's do some math here. One. We know that one whole, right, can be breaken into two halves. So if we think mathematically, two halves, right, would be 50-50. And for me, this idea of 50-50 kind of settled into my brain before we had our first, our daughter, Michaela. And before we had her, there was this idea reeling in my mind of our new reality, right? Who's going to wake up and feed her her bottles in the middle of the night? Who's going to give her her bath? Who's going to eventually take her to preschool? What, how is this going to work? 
And so my mind started to shift into this, well, we're two halves to a whole, so therefore it's just gonna be shared. If I do it one night, the next day, he's gonna do it. If I cook dinner, then he'll cook dinner. If I do the laundry, then he'll do the laundry. And we'll just, we'll just come at this as a team. Well, you're probably laughing right now because you realize that does not happen, right? I can still remember the moment, and I hope you have this memory too, because it is one of my favorites, when after I had had my daughter, I'm sitting there lying in that bed, and everyone else had kind of left, you know, the room, and it was just myself, my new baby girl, this one nurse asking me random questions about my address, and I believe my husband had gone to get, I don't know, food, ice chips, I don't know, whatever, he had gone somewhere, and I was just sitting there holding this baby <laughs> and it smacked me across the face. Oh my gosh, I'm a mom. And this is not what I expected. This is not what I was thinking was going to happen. Where's my husband? <laughs> Where's all the people? And it was kind of this reality check that as a mom, we carry sometimes a little bit more emotional and physical weight with our children. And sometimes we do it unintentionally, sometimes we do it intentionally, and sometimes it just happens, right? But that reality started to sink in. And then of course we had baby number two and things started to kind of pile up for me and my new reality. I was looking at this 50-50 idea and realizing very quickly that that was not happening. So in the wrong thinking that I had, I started to become angry, resentful, and bitter towards my husband because what was happening? I was waking up every time she cried and I was feeding her. I was making dinner every night because I was home, especially in the beginning when our daughter was first born. I was the one doing the laundry and cleaning up the dishes afterwards and keeping the house. And then our son came and then I was taking her to preschool and caring for him and working full time. And life began to become a little bit intense and stressful. And this idea of 50-50 started to smack me in the face, right? Oh, he's not doing his part. Well, I'm doing way too much. And what's crazy, ladies, is that research shows if we go all the way back, right, before the 70s when women really started to work more and get more into um, having their own careers, there was this mindset that women took care of the children and the home and men worked. And if we look back at those mathematical percentages, that would put us into like an 80-20 situation. Women are going to do 80% of what happens at home and with the children, and their husbands are going to do 20 right? Let's fast forward to the 70s when women started working more. Well, there was this huge movement and that movement's still pretty active today where this idea of partnered shared responsibility, 50-50. I'm going to do it today. You're going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to spend 10 minutes with the children at this event. You're going to spend 10 minutes and then we will swap. Now, it sounds good in theory, right? We're sharing, that's good, everything is fair, 50-50, that's fair. We reach our 100. Well, we know that that's not possible, not every day. There are things that happen in this reality that we live in. He's got a work meeting, you've got an extra event, the kid's sick, something happens, school's closed. And you can't live in this 50-50 world all the time. And so what starts to happen when your 50 turns to 75 and his 50 turns down to 25 or 30? you become bitter, angry, and resentful towards this one person who you're supposed to be doing life with. This person that you found and fell in love with and you said, I do, and you wanted to start this journey with. Now this person, they're on the opposing team. Now it's a competition. And we fall into this comparison trap of who did what? Who did more than who? Well, I did this, 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 and this. What did you do today? How, how many times have you taken the kids to school this week? How many diapers have you changed this week? And whether you're saying those things out loud or you're just keeping them in your mind, 
you fall into this realm of comparison and you start to become resentful towards the one person that should be your team member, should be on your team wearing the same jersey. And instead of walking down this road with your spouse, you resent them. And the other crazy part is we also then start to use our children as weapons and tools against our spouse, right? Well, I changed her diaper and I brought him to school and you didn't go to their soccer game and you didn't bring her to dance. And now our children are our resources to fight our arguments. And I want to just take us back into the Bible and just remind ourselves why God gave us these children, right? So in Psalms 127, three through five, it says, children are a gift from the Lord, a reward from a mother's womb. A young man's sons are like the arrows in a soldier's hand. The man who fills his quiver with sons will be very blessed. He will never be defeated when he opposes his enemy at the city gate. Our children are a blessing. They're they're resources for us to use for God's kingdom. They can be arrows shot out into the world to be able to share that love and that grace of God. That's why we get to have these amazing children. And instead of utilizing them for what God wants to use them for, we use them as tools to continue fighting our spouse. So you may be sitting there going, okay, okay, that's my reality. That's where I'm sitting. Well, you said I'm going to find joy in my reality. Well, where's the joy? You've not talked about any joy. You're right. Because for the last five and a half years that my children have been alive, my husband and I have fought through this reality of who does what, who's got the one up on one another in our life. And this joy of reality is non-existent. And I'm going to walk through a couple of steps that we need to take to get there. But I first want to start by letting us know that we have got to shift our mindset right? In Mark, God talks all about how you can't live in a house divided. You can't um, belong to Satan and belong to God at the same time. You can't live in this world where you're fighting one another. So if we're going to live in this home together and raise up these children together, we have got to be on the same team. And so if we're going to be on the same team, that means our mindset has got to change. And so for me, I know this doesn't make sense mathematically, what we tend to do is we think about what 80% can I do? And then for my husband, what 80% can I do? Now let's look at the math there. That doesn't equal a hundred. It equals way more than a hundred, right? But the truth is in life, you're not going to always reach the 80. You may be at 60, 70% of doing that capacity of what you can and can't do, but your husband may be a little bit less that day, or maybe you're less because you've had a huge event that's held you back that week. So you're sitting at 45%, but he brings his 80. We're still over hundred percent. And when we do that, we're not, we're not living in this world of competition where our houses are divided. We're now living in a team effort. It's a we. So we're doing life together. And when we look at things as us, how are we going to fold this laundry and get it put away? How are we going to deal with car line and pick up and drop offs? How are we going to handle the new baby and changing diapers? What are we going to do to deal with these bills and these issues? Now we're a team and we're no longer putting the responsibility on the other person or resentful because I did it and they didn't. So let's walk through some very practical steps, right? What can we start doing today that can help us to reach this goal of 80 and 80. So this is all in your fill-in. So follow along with me on that fill-in. Here's number one. Number one, you're gonna say I'm cliche, but I don't care. Stop and pray. Stop and pray. How many times have women seen their husband come to salvation because of prayer? How many times have mothers prayed their children out of addictions because of prayer? How many times has prayer brought us into places we would have never thought we could have been in? Prayer is so powerful and we take it for granted. We say a quick prayer before grace and we let it go the rest of the day. And for us, I want us just to stop and think about, I need to really pray over my husband, my children. I need to pray for peace over my house. And I need to pray for me to get out of this anger and resentment. You may need to pray forgiveness 
for what you've thought and said or done towards your spouse or towards your children out of that anger. You may need to ask forgiveness for, from, your, from your spouse and say to them, I'm sorry for doing X, Y, and Z. And maybe it's hard for you to say verbally. Maybe you should write it down, send a text message in a different way. However works for you, but we do need to stop and pray. And step number two is have a conversation. Now that conversation may start with that forgiveness conversation, or if you feel like you're able to move past that, it's going to be a conversation about that team, right? We're a team. We're going to work together. We're going to do this together. The biggest piece of this conversation is tell your husband, I need help and I can't do this on my own because we like to carry all the bags. Literally, moms, we carry all the bags sometimes. Stop. Ask your husband for help before your suds deep, your child peed all over the floor and the dogs just run through the house with muddy paws. Ask for help before that happens because when your husband knows that you can't do it alone and you need help, he will start to see the needs before they happen. So that's step number two, have the conversation. Don't go to him angry. Don't go to him frustrated and just tell him what he needs to do. You can't be that nagging wife, right? We have to let our heavenly father be that voice in him. Pray first, have a conversation. Step number three is create routines. You may not be as routine focused, organized, type A personality like I am, but Routines create the opportunity for there to be flexibility. If we have routines, then we know that when other things come and happen, we can shift and change our life a little bit because we know there's a routine. My husband takes my daughter to school. I take my son to school. But sometimes that has to shift. We work as a team. We figure it out. But if there is a routine, at least we can flow within that routine, right? And then step number four, which applies to all of these, is be flexible. Be flexible that the routine's not going to work that week or you're going to have to go back and pray again because he's just not doing it, right? And you just need God's help again. You're going to have to have another conversation. You're going to have to bring yourself down from that anger and that bitterness and frustration. Those moments are going to have to happen. So be flexible. Because if you've asked him to start doing the dishes for you, when he does the dishes wrong, be flexible. It's okay. You can't get angry because he's doing something different than maybe you would have done it. As long as the task or the thing is getting done, be joyful and happy and knowing that this is my reality. So mamas, that's just what I want for us today is to take slow steps towards this joy, finding joy in the reality of what life looks like right now, even though it might feel chaotic and crazy. And even though this might take the next five years to really reach a place, join me in the journey of finding this joy because the reality is not going to change. You are where you are. Jobs may change. You may add new children to the situation. Your house may move, but the reality of life as a mom, as a parent, as a wife, it's not going to change. So let's live in it in the peace and the love and the joy that God's given us, knowing that he's going to bless us for that obedience. Thank you so much. Let's just pray one more time that God takes all this stuff, soaks it up, and helps us to be able to use it this week. God, we just love you. We thank you because we know that true joy and peace only comes from you. And we thank you because you've given us these children, you've given us this spouse, and we're grateful that we get a chance to be able to love them in the way that you would love them. Help us to see life from a new perspective and find that joy in this reality we live in. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.